Dragons. That's the first task. The wizarding world can be a dangerous place. So which of the Harry Potter actors struggled through the most pain? Whether it was because of sets or other cast members, these actors were left bleeding, bruised, and battered, all in the name of art. So let's see just how much damage they endured. Harry! Come on! Ow! Are you right? You must be freezing! Number one, it just hurts so good. Poor Dan Radcliffe struggled through the most painful first day on set that he could have imagined. That first day, we were trying to get Dan's eyes to be green because that's what they are in the book. Sporting green contact lenses that gave him a wildly painful allergic reaction. This was so brutal that he couldn't even bear to wear them another day. We removed the contacts and he's never had green eyes since. Which explains why we never really got those famous Lily Potter green eyes. You have your mum off his eyes, yeah. Absolutely and unequivocally no. Number two, this queen took him down. Rupert Grint didn't know what hit him. I'll be a knight. During the giant chess game, the moment Ron was struck by the queen wound up being way more painful than anyone intended. Grint got nicked in the face by a rogue rock and was left bleeding. The evidence of what happened even made the final cut. Ron! Don't forget, we're still playing. Number three, like son, like father. After seeing this deleted scene, we can without a doubt see why Draco is the way he is. For Tom, his on-screen father could be intimidating. Working with Jason was not always a treat. Just immediately turned into the most unfriendly, horrible person. And Tom even had the cuts to prove it. Jason Isaacs came into filming his first scene with all the Malfoy cruelty in check, smacking Tom's hand on set, not realizing just how much damage those fangs on the end of his stick could do. Tom was left bleeding and with tears in his eyes, but... It's all right. It's good for the scene. Number four. Snow can do some serious damage. The final cut of Prisoner of Azkaban even shows us how Felton was feeling about those snowballs, when he visibly flinched before even getting smacked. Who is that? A snowball fight can be fun for one day, but going at it over and over and over again? Well, that snow can hurt. Bloody hell, Harry. <laughs> that was not funny. Number five. Rule number one. Don't mess with Hermione. Such a good moment. One of the all-time greatest moments in the HP series is no doubt when Hermione delivers a knuckle sandwich for the ages. And while they did it fairly safely on set, the prep to do so wasn't so smooth. A film earlier, Tom wanted to practice so they could get comfortable with it. But what he didn't realize is that Emma would have no problem at all delivering a vicious slap across his cheek. Quite frankly, he's been asking for it. Emma has admitted, looking back on it, that she had no idea what she was thinking. Never again did Tom offer himself to that kind of torture. The sting of that slap stayed with him. That felt good. Not good. Brilliant. Number six. The struggle was real. Harry did spend a fair amount of time of the Goblet of Fire film underwater, so the fact that he racked up a whopping 40 hours in the water tank is not surprising. And because of that, we can understand why he also wound up with two ear infections during the filming process. The pain really never stopped with this one. Number seven. It wasn't just the actors who suffered on this set. Director Mike Newell really liked to get into the action and wanted to make sure he could get the best performances out of his actors. When it came time for the Weasley twins to fight, Newell wanted to see even more fire instead of the prissy work he described he was seeing. But this director learned his lesson, saying, Of course, I was a tubby 60-year-old gent at the, that stage, and I really shouldn't have done it. And why is that? Well, because when he got into it, this director wound up breaking two of his ribs while demonstrating how to fight. He wasn't feeling like such a tough guy after that one. You know when you shouldn't break a director's rib? <sighs> Number eight. The Triwizard Tournament was tough from the start. While Dan wound up in pretty rough shape afterwards, he did get to perform one of the coolest stunts he'd ever done, a major 40-foot slide down the roof. Understandably, he was terrified, and his body was feeling it after the fact. Dan shared what the experience was like, saying, I was on a wire, but I was properly in free fall. It was only there to catch me at the end. Number nine, not the kind you're thinking, though. Matthew Lewis struggled through the early years, forced to look like nerdy Neville around all the kids growing up. Why is it always me? And then he endured some seriously painful torture after Helena Bonham Carter accidentally stabbed him in the ear with her wand. Now this left Lewis in agonizing pain, nursing a perforated eardrum. 
He could hide his pain well since no one actually knew until after the fact when he confessed that he was indeed suffering internal bleeding. Number 10. Good friends know when it's time to put a friend in their place. Hermione was ready to call Harry out if he ever crossed a line. And this one, well, he paid the price for. I'm the choice of one. Yeah, that's not what she was wanting to hear from Dan. That said, her brutal reaction left the actor with a sore face afterwards. You're laughing because you hit me so hard, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what can we say? Hermione is a firecracker you don't want to mess with. Number 11. This can't end well. And surprise, surprise, it didn't. As if Radcliffe hadn't faced enough hardships on these sets, filming's left him with a brutal cut on his lip. This wasn't just any snake he was facing off with. The snake Radcliffe was going tete a tete with was the stunt coordinator on the film, who was wielding a pole with a boxing glove stuck on the end of it. And in one take, they got a bit too feisty. Radcliffe shared that. It went up and smacked me in the mouth, and my teeth went really hard into my gum, so I had a fat lip for about a day. Number 12. You gotta do what you gotta do. And Hermione was ready to get to work, even if Harry was hesitant. But she needed that hair to make the polyjuice potion. Yikes, though. Watson definitely did not mean to hurt Dan in the process, only to help him. But as we've seen, sometimes Hermione just knows what's best. I am still very much in touch with everyone that I worked with. Number 13. Emma could also cause herself some pain. Growing up on set meant Watson could feel comfortable to experiment and try pushing herself in ways that one may normally not be able to. And to be fair, she did go a bit too far with this one. Acting like you're being tortured doesn't really sound like an appealing day on set. But it was particularly bad for Watson, who kind of lost herself in it and caused some serious pain to her psyche. The physical aspect was rough too, and all that torture action left her body feeling really sore and exhausted by the end. But she did give the performance of a lifetime. Number 14. That's not quite the way you want to leave a set. But unfortunately for Dan, bruises took over his body. The final film of the franchise had stunts that Dan described as the greatest physical challenges. He'd faced off with vicious creatures, but it was scaling up chaotically piled furniture in the room of requirement while trying to find Ravenclaw's diadem that really threw him. The fact that he spent a full seven hours doing it meant he was black and blue all over. By the end of the day, I was just bruised and battered. Number 15. It was the battle of a lifetime. Come on, Tom. Let's finish this the way we started. Together. And considering how it turned out, well, it was a win for Harry, but Dan paid the painful price. Ray Fiennes didn't hold back, and Dan could feel it. He explained, I wore padding, but he missed it a couple of times, so anyone who doesn't like me can come to the movie and see me getting beaten up. To be fair, did we really think Voldemort would go down without a fight? But we did about three or four takes, and it was a really intense moment. So what we can conclude is that being part of the Harry Potter franchise was a serious hazard, even if you weren't acting in it, as director Mike Newell unfortunately found out. Which situation sounds most painful to you? 